1 Timothy chapter 1, starting at verse 18. When you have it, say amen. amen. This is Tim, God, Paul telling his son Timothy and giving him some, a charge, uh, giving him some responsibility. He says, Timothy, my son, hear my instruction for you based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier. May they help you. Talking about the prophetic words spoken about you. May they help you fight well. You're in a fight, y'all. Yeah. In the Lord's battles. Don't fight the flesh. Fight the Lord's battles. He tells his son, cling. That means hold on tightly, y'all. Not loosely. Grip it. Cling to your faith in Christ. Mm. And keep your conscience clear. Discipleship class. Mission to Greedy, Lanny been teaching about conscience and subconscious. Clean to your faith, my God in Christ, and keep your conscience clear. For some people have liber liber liberally violated their conscience, and as a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. Hinamaeus and Alexander are two examples. I threw them out, Paul says, to his son Timothy and handed them over to Satan so that they might learn not to blaspheme God. Father God, let your apostolic anointing rest on the body of Christ. Father God, I just thank you for new dimensions. I thank you that you start with me and first lady as you prepare us to go deeper and push deeper into the kingdom, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that our rhythm, Father God, is tight. And thank you, Father God, that every weapon that tries to form against the head shall not prosper in the name of Jesus, Father God. As I decreed and declared this past Sunday, Father God, everything connected to me and my wife wins. And so those that's properly connected to going off for Christ in submission, Lord, they win. Their children win. Their finances win. They win in their marriages and everything, Father God. So I thank you, Father God, and I decree and I declare as you have commissioned me, Father God, to go ye into the world and make disciples. Father God, I thank you for a deliverance ministry. I thank you, Father God, that we're raging war, Father God, that we're fighting kingdom battles, Father God. Ah, we're doing good battle in your kingdom. Thank you for selecting us. Thank you for snatching us out, all of us, Father God, because we could be dead right now, but just snatched us out at just the right time, Father God. You gave us a new heart and a new mind, and we love you for it. Now teach with accuracy, Father God. Help your people, Father God. Strengthen everything that remains in this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated great men and women of God in the presence of the Lord. This is going to be a two-part series, so I'm going to make sure I take my time and teach you. Because the title of this sermon, before, as I give it to you after I finish my introduction, is exactly what's happening at 205 and abroad. Are y'all with me so far? Yes, On April the 10th, 1912, the RMS Titanic. Titanic left her berth at the harbor in Southampton, England. This was the maiden voyage for the 882 foot long ocean linear that had been built as unsinkable. It has been built as unsinkable. It was built never to sink. It was established, baby, never to sink. Pastor Cham, look at me. It was built and established, watch my verbiage, never to sink, they thought. She carried with her 2,228 passenger and crew. Most of the passengers has paid thousands of dollars to sail on that great luxury linear. Four days into the voyage on April the 14th, 1912, a severe ice, severe ice warnings was received. Severe ice warnings was received. Severe ice warnings were received. Severe ice warnings were received for the area through which the Titanic was sailing. These warnings were ignored. Because pride said this ocean, this ship has been built and it cannot sink. Yeah. So despite the warnings, I'm going on. Yeah. In spite of what I see, in spite of what I feel, in spite of what I heard, I've convinced myself that I, I can't nothing touch me. I convinced myself I'm good because I got some money in the bank. 
Uh, I convince myself that it's good. Everything is good because we got a little rhythm in the marriage. Uh, we got the kids are doing okay. Watch the warnings. Because after your greatest attack, my God, we tend to relax. And that's what the enemy is waiting for us to do. He ain't going to bother you while you're in war. He's going to wait till after the war. Because then after the war, that's when we tend to chill. That's when we take off our armor. Which is according to Ephesians, we ain't never supposed to take that off no way. And so they ignored, they ignored, they ignored, and they sailed on. And the Titanic kept her course. For New York, for, for New York Harbor, at 11.40 p.m., the tank struck an iceberg on the starboard side of the boat. She began to take in water at an alarming rate. Within three hours, the Titanic and 1,523 other passengers were at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Only 705 of the original 2,228 persons survived their great shipwreck. Most of us in this room would never be involved in a shipwreck at sea. However, the possibility exists that we might suffer shipwreck in our spiritual life. In some ways, a spiritual shipwreck is far more devastating than a shipwreck physically. Our text, my God, reveals something about spiritual shipwrecks and how to avoid them. As I stated, we probably get to point one, maybe two, and we'll go from there. But the title of the sermon, my God, is, put it up there, Mahogany. Don't shipwreck. I've been waiting for years, to be honest, to teach this subject. Every year I read the one you're reading from the time I was in prison to the time I got out and started in 2003 reading the one you're reading and I've been wanting to preach about shipwreck. I mentioned it before but I'm talking about really get some teaching on shipwreck because the time is now where many, as I told y'all the last two weeks, everything is line upon line, precept upon precept and that's why you got to follow the work, my God, by the Spirit. Last two weeks the Spirit of God has been talking about don't take the bait of Satan. See, I'm saying if you have not and you was not here, I encourage you to go to YouTube and also to subscribe to YouTube so you can stay caring with the church that you call your family. But the Bible, has God released me to talk about the bait of Satan, my God, from the great John Bevere and how, key word, the bait. The bait is causing many all around the nation, all around the country, my God, to shipwreck. And so here is Paul giving instruction, my God, to his son Timothy, who was a young pastor just like myself, my God, and yet he was getting ready to take over the church. And so Paul wanted to give him some apostolic instructions. He wanted a commission. A commission is a charge. A commission is a directive. He was charging, my God, his son, that if you do these things and you listen to your pastor, don't get full of yourself because you got a title now. Don't think that you more than that, my God, because somebody wants you to pray for them now. Uh, you get a chance to preach. I'm trying to help you. Uh, you're being active in the kingdom, my God, doing some things. Don't get full of yourself. Guard your life. He said clean to your faith. He didn't say clean to church structure, church polity. None of it. He said clean to faith because faith is the only thing that's going to matter when you and I, I Brandon, stand before the Lord. He didn't say clean the protocol. He didn't say clean the structure and order. He said clean to faith. And faith has to do with Christ. That's the only thing that's going to keep you, son, in this battle. As I get ready to release you, because he knew, my God, according to 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, that, you, that Timothy was going to go through a whole lot of battles. And so he wanted to make sure that he admonished and in charge him, my God, to hold on to faith. Because you're going to see some things, you're going to feel some things. There are going to be some people that lie on you and talk about you. You're going to go through all the stuff that we go through. Stay connected. By faith. So put point number one up there, my God. Let's look at the reality of shipwrecks. I want to teach you, is that okay? Everyone in this room could think of a person or persons who once walked. Oh, my God, I got a lot of them. Who once walked with the Lord and have now made shipwreck of their spiritual walk. Yeah, I want you to think right now. Think of the people that was walking with you at one time. Some of them led you to Christ and they ain't even in Christ no more. Think about the people that invited you to go on off of Christ Church. I'm going to keep it on the dollar. They ain't even here no more. But that's not a bad thing because they might have, their assignment probably was to get you heard and push. See, all that goes with part of being a poor connected to a body. Everybody ain't supposed to stay here. My God, as long as, it got, as, long as you're here, you ought to be giving God some glory. Let's give God a hand. 
Because you didn't have to make it. You could have still been out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. But we can think of all kind of people. I know I have. I keep... keep uh, mm. uh, who the Bible says you got to love what God loves. When, this is how you know you're starting to get real sensitive to God. When things that matter to God really matter to you. And guess what matter to God? It's people. So, he came to seek and save that which was So again, think about the people that you know that the person or people are the persons, my God, person or persons, my God, that is shipwrecked. And just because a person is quoting scripture don't mean they're still in God. Just because they're talking about God on Facebook don't mean they're in God. Just because you see them periodically pop up in church don't mean that they're in God. I promise you. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey. One of the first signs you look for to make sure that somebody is properly connected is consistent, faithful obedience. That don't mean that you don't make no mistakes before you will be consistently connected and you will see obedience in your life. It won't be on your terms. It'll be on the Lord's terms. That's when you know you're properly connected because you're serving God on his terms, not on your terms. Who I just feel like teaching tonight. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I can't get nobody to give God no hand right there, though. That's okay. That's okay. I'm coming. God is coming. God is coming. Oh, my God, my God, my God. What we need to remember this evening, though, is this. Spiritual shipwrecks don't just happen to others. They can happen to you and me as well. No one, including this pastor, in this room is immune, immune to the possibility that we all fall into S-I-N and make shipwrecked of our lives. Please don't ignore the danger of becoming shipwrecked. Oh, my God. The enemy rocks you to sleep. I preached a sermon back in 2013 called Don't Drift. You think about a boat. When you bring a boat to the dock and you strap it down and the vicissitudes of light, the undercurrent, the undercurrent is not on top. It's what's down low, y'all. The undercurrent, if a boat ain't properly docked, Pastor Champ, you'll look up, my God, the next morning and the boat will be way over there. And they're just like people, my God, in the body of Christ. My God, they hear, but their soul is way over there. And that's why Jesus said, my God, they worship me with their mouth, but their hearts is far from me. Shipwrecked. Drifting. Her, but not her. Even tithing, but not in God. Tithing to clear your conscience, but you're still not obedient to God. Because you can tithe and still be out of order when it comes to God. God going to bless your tithe, but God want to bless your life. And so don't try to manipulate God by your tithing. And think that you can live a raggedy, whole his life, and think you're going to stand before God and her job, well done. They don't work like that. See, because many people shipwreck because they base their faith on giving. And they think, as long as I'm giving, I'm okay. The devil is a lie. The money is the root. Root leads to bitterness. Root leads to out of order. Roots lead to disobedience. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The reality. This is real talk up in here tonight. That's why I put reality. Because this is reality that most pastors, now let me be careful. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I feel you, baby. Most people don't want to deal with. But because I care about S-O-U-L-S. Then I have to make sure that I prepare you to stay connected and clean to your faith. I'm giving you the same apostolic instruction that Apostle Paul, who, my God, who gave his son and said, the only way you're going to outlast the storm, you better cling to your faith. Don't listen to nobody. Don't watch nobody, Valeria. Oh, my God. Any, the devil will use anybody, anything to try to disconnect you to make you shipwreck. And they'll get mad at you because you ain't offended because you stand planted. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. They want you to get offended. They want you to shipwreck because how many know darkness love company? 
People that's offended, Lord, to hang out with people that's offended. People that's weak, Lord, to hang out with weak people. Come on, somebody. People that's bitter, like hanging out with bitterness. People that lives in the dark, like hanging out with people that's in the dark. And so if you're in the light, they're going to try to pull you to the dark because they need some company in darkness. And many people are falling for it. I know y'all see me online, and many of them is falling for it. Being pulled from the light to the dark. Shipwrecking. Just remember, write this down, please. It can happen to anyone. As I put that in there for me, hard as Pastor me going, 24 flat, my God, it can happen to me as well. If I do not cling to my faith. The only thing that's going to keep you anchored, the only thing that's going to keep you from drifting, the only thing that's going to outlast the storms, the only thing that God's going to receive from you and I is faith. Because the Bible says anything that's not done in faith is S-I-N, sin. You can't just give God worship if it ain't in faith. You can't give God praise because praise is external, worship is internal. You got to make sure whatever you do, you're doing it by faith. If you are here tonight and you came because you just wanted to come, there's a measure of faith to that. Let me pick you up. But you better make sure you get all the way in faith so God can receive your offering. God can receive your studying so God can pour into you. Because sometimes we come in the church and I'm guilty of broken pieces. And we need some little help. That's why I like when you get to go and share and it picks me up. My God, I like when I see my wife on the altar, it picks me up. Sometimes y'all see pastor turning around, I'm looking. Sometimes you'll see me moving to the side. I'm trying to find something that can give me some strength, my God. I'm trying to find something I can latch on to, that I can draw something from, brother. That's why every now and then, brother, I get out there and I tag you, homie, because I need something to pick me up. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. I'm looking for your brand. I'm looking for your star. My God, everybody needs somebody. Your sister needs your praise. Your brother needs Need your prayer. These children need your prayer. A lot of our kids and grandkids is watching you, my God, as you worship God. This baby sitting over here right now watching mamas and great balls right now in the house of the Lord. When you don't feel it, you got to do it by faith. When you don't see it, you got to do oh, I almost said sorry, baby. If you don't see it, you got to do it by faith. Come on. If you don't, my God, my God, you got to believe by faith. Mm, mm, mm. Lord, help me. I'm trying to work mine out like everybody else. I'm trying to encourage the body of Christ. Yeah, I call straight to the man of God. I need to know what God is saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First Corinthians 10, 12 says this, y'all. Remember, we're talking about realities. If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. Paul, wait, writing to the Corinthian church to keep stuff in context for y'all. Writing to the Corinthian church, you had a whole lot of spiritual gifts, a whole lot of spiritual activity, but they was carnal, fleshly, and full of sin. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, dealing with the Corinthian church. It was wicked. A lot of gifts, a lot of tongues, a lot of prophecy, a lot of spiritual move, a lot of spiritual activity, but they was in full-blooded sin. Are y'all with me so far? Please don't be that type of person. Make some type of vows and commitments to yourself that, I, that you refuse to be a hypocrite. Proverbs, write this down, 16, 18 says, pride, we know familiar, goes before destruction. And a haughtiness before a fall. Mmm. Thank you, Lord. Haughtiness before a fall. So there is reality to this thing that it can happen to anyone. No matter how long you've been walking with God, no matter how, no, because you could be strong today and broke down by 12 o'clock tonight. Life has a way of taking a turn overnight. Or you could be sitting high, everything going good, and you get a phone call, my God, at 3 o'clock in the morning, and everything that you had is now gone. You could be sitting in church, I hate to say it, but I'm going to use it because this is what God gave me, and everything that you own is burnt down to the ground. And now you need, what is it, people that come see about you? Red Cross. Life can turn on you. That's why you got to cling to your faith. Don't let your faith be, my, my God, be connected to things. 
Because things come and things go. And if your faith, my God, is connected to what you got, material stuff, my God, you are in trouble. You will shipwreck in a matter of time and just a matter of time before you give up on God. Because I'm going to tell you something. My Bible says, oh, my God, the Bible says that God will give you stuff and that God will take stuff away. Because when God bless you with something and your heart be, be, yo, and that become your God, God said, okay, I gave it to you for you to manage it for my kingdom. But now you worship it instead of me. So I'm going to take it from you. Oh. So we pray for stuff and believe in God for stuff. And then when God give it to us, we worship it. So God said, okay, my God, here's sin warning. He'll send warning. He'll send a word from the pool pit. He'll send a word from your sister. You'll see something. I heard something. God is trying to warn you. You're clinging too tight to that. You're clinging too tight to that mess. You're clinging too tight to your money. You're clinging too tight to your husband. You're clinging too tight to your, uh, your wife. You're clinging too tight to your kid. You got too many idols in the way. You got too many much stuff blocking. You done lost your passion. You ain't passionate about me no more. You ain't in love with me like you used to be. You don't flip the pages like you used to. You ain't on your face like you used to. You're getting the prayer six. 45 when you should get there at 545 my God I'm right I'm warning you I'm warning you I'm warning the Bible says that God get warning before destruction don't miss the warnings God is warning many of us right now this word has come as a warning that you are clinging to the wrong things Paul my God told his son you better cling to this faith because you won't make it as a pastor if you don't clean the faith. Uh, the only thing that's going to keep me in this one right here is faith. The only thing going to keep you in her is faith, my God. Oh, my God, my God, my God. That stuff, my God, that is coming in. Oh, the Bible says you was running a good race. You was running a good race. Galatians. The Galatians church, they was running well. Paul said, what, what has come in? Uh, you, you got delivered from this law. Now you back up under the law. You, know, you was free from all that stuff. Now you're back in bondage. You was running good. You was focused. My God, your heart was set. Yo, you was in love with Jesus. Oh, my God, you was walking right. You was talking right. You was staying away from ungodly things. My God, you was doing the best you can to live a sanctified, holy life. And now look at you in the club. You're back with cigarettes in your mouth. You're back smoking weed here. I'm just keeping it on the dollar. You was running good. God set you free. Now you're back entangled. The Bible says in Galatians with the yoke of bondage. I set you free from this element of the world. Now you right back in it. Yeah. I delivered you three encounters ago. Now why you back there again? How did you get there? You shipwrecked and you didn't clean to your faith. Somebody please stand and honor God tonight. Please stand and honor God tonight. So the realities of a shipwreck can happen to the best of us. Of course, many of you is on social media. Many of you hear things. By God, do you see some of the great, my God, uh, the great people that we love, be it in the clergy, are just being celebrities and different people that fall. Everybody stumble, but you got the power by faith to get back up. See what I say? If you have stumbled, if you have shifted, if you have shipwrecked tonight, if you're looking online, my God, you have shipwrecked. Call 918-622-8300 and say, look, I need some help. My God, I heard what that pastor was talking about. And I need some help. My God, I need to talk to somebody. My God, oh my God, and I get you to somebody if you're out there looking right now. Because I don't want you out there, my God, drowning in the ocean. My God, I'm going to throw you a lifeboat, a life jacket, but you better reach for it. Come on, somebody. And I meant everything I just said because we got many of them watching. We probably got more people out on watching than we got in the house. So this is a reality right here. Paul is telling his son, this is how you avoid a shipwreck, clean to your faith. Are y'all with me? Let's go to point number two. Lord, have mercy. Did y'all get that? So we all understand this, is, this can happen to anybody, right? This can happen to your pastor, hard as he go, right? Okay, okay. So we all even across the board, right? As I was teaching my wife last uh, today, my God, and we all equal when it comes to salvation. But not in authority. Everybody in here is equal when it comes to salvation. But there's different mantles, different levels of authority, different degrees that you walk in. And that can be given by God and commissioned by God through the man of God. Quit trying to walk in your own authority. A title don't give you authority. How you function and operate, that's what gives you authority. That comes straight from heaven. God empowers you. To own the office instead of letting the office own you. 
Many people get an office and they shipwreck. Many people get an office, i.e. title, our responsibilities in God's kingdom, and they start drifting. They was gone whole when they first got it. All of a sudden now they don't manage it. They don't steward right. They steward on their terms instead of what God say. Yeah. <laughs> they breathing on it instead of letting God breathe on it. I told y'all next level, new dimensions, a whole nother level of preaching, prophecy, the whole nine. And with that comes clipping. Me and Pastor Chan was watching T.D. Jakes, and T.D. Jakes said, if half of the people that has joined his church over the years would still be in his church, he would have to have a whole nother building. So just like they leave this one and leave that one and leave that one, they leave all of them. Point two, the reasons. Let's look at some reasons. Paul tells us the reason that these two men suffered shipwreck was because they put away their faith. This phrase literally means to thrust or push away. Look at me, y'all. This is my faith. When you and I do this, thrust, Push away, you know, thrust and push away our faith. You have to understand that if we push our thrust away, away, cast away from me, push away from me, throw away from me, turn my back on, the most important element in the kingdom, faith, how do you expect for you to last? If you push away the very thing that keeps you connected to the vine. It takes faith to stay connected to the vine. It takes faith to pray. It takes faith to read. It takes faith to be obedient. It takes faith to love. It takes faith, my God, to forgive. See, it takes faith to do anything. It is like money in the natural. It's, it's currency in the kingdom. Faith is currency in the kingdom. And if your faith is thrown away, cast off, thrust off, what are you fighting? You fight the enemy by faith, not by flesh. So if you ain't got anchored faith, what are you fighting with? My God. He told Timothy, my God, that you're fighting good battles. We got to make sure we quit. We got to quit as a people of God everywhere. We got to quit fighting flesh battles and start fighting faith battles. Flesh, if you fight in the flesh, you're tired, you're wore out, you never want to read, you never want to pray, you ain't got no excitement, no passion, no victory, no joy, because you're fighting by the flesh. That's why the word of God says our weapons are not carnal. You don't need a gun and a knife, you don't need your tongue, you don't need your nasty attitude and all that, my God, you don't need to be giving nobody no finger, crushing nobody out. That's fighting by the flesh. That's why many of us ain't got no victory in our, in our relationship because we try to win, I convince him or her, by way of the flesh. Because we have cast out faith because we think faith don't work no more. So I'm going to take, take this battle to my own hand. I ain't got time to wait on God. I'm frustrated. God, you ain't doing nothing. I've been fasting. I've been praying. My God, I'm helping everybody else. Kids, ain't nothing happening. I'm going to do this by myself. I ain't got time to wait on you. And then we start operating and functioning in flesh and not in faith. And we wonder why the heavens is shoot. I know I'm delivering it by the Spirit of God with passion, but I'm trying to help you get free for your shipwreck. Because I don't want you to. Because I love you. I don't know how many pastors say they wish they had the freedom with their people that you have with your people. I've been told that, ain't I, many times, by different pastors. If I had the freedom you have with your people, whew, said I envy you for that. Not bound by laws and tradition. Bound by the spirit. Paul said, who's that? Woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. Woe unto me if I don't teach the gospel. Yeah, I'm not bound by tradition. I'm not bound by man. I'm not bound by your perception. I'm not bound by their perception. I'm bound by the perception of Christ. Amen, Sharon. Champ. Thank you. My God, so, 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 he thrust away his faith. Mm. 
It refers, this word talking about thrust, and my God, putting away your faith. It refers to intentionally turning from, from truth to error. Intentionally. I said before you life, death, blessing, and curses, choose life. So I make a, I make a willful choice, decision. Nobody made me do it. To turn away from what's truth, to turn to what's wrong. You ain't got nobody to blame if that has happened to you or is happening to you but yourself. If ain't nobody forcing you, my God, to leave the truth. But see, this is why you got to, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. This is why we, thank you, Holy Ghost, this is why we have to fall over there what Apostle Paul said, and he says, I am persuaded. <laughs> Sooner or later, uh, your faith and your hope can't rest on another man. Many people got hope and faith in great preachers. Uh, people navigate to preachers, my God, that, that's educated and got all the glitz and glamours and all that. Sooner, that's okay. I'm not putting that down, my God. But sooner or later, your faith got to cling to God, not people. Uh, and Paul said, I am persuaded that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. No, no trials, no, it don't. If you come, you, if you don't come without desire, nothing. That's why you never worship a man more than you worship God. Like I tell y'all, don't worship me. I'm not God. Don't put your faith in. You have a level of substance you put in me, but you put all your trust and faith in God. Many people are worshiping the man that has the title and the pastor of the church and not worship the God who died for the church. And then when something happened to him, like y'all see this happening around the nation. I'm, I'm up there, I'm out there y'all. Then the people are wounded scarred and don't want to have nothing else to do with church because they worship the man and not the God who created the man. That's why I tell y'all you got to have reverence. Reverence will keep you from mishandling this pulpit. For those that has the mantle to stand before people, respect and revere. The beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of reverence, fear, respect will keep you and I from doing stuff that we shouldn't do. Whether you got a title or not. You know, if you got the fear of the Lord in you, my God, it'll keep you from making decisions after that you know that's ungodly. It'll keep you from going places that you know you shouldn't go. It'll keep you from doing things that you know you shouldn't do. Even when you make a mistake, you'll go back and say, come here, I got to talk to you. I'm sorry. Forgive me for the way I talk to you. I can't get nobody to say nothing. Ah, forgive me. That's right, Pastor. That's right. Church has lost its reverence. That's another reality that the church has shipwrecked from reverence to God. People don't respect God no more. You know why? Because it's always taught grace, grace, grace. Brother Will, my God, up there working him in death, he said, Pastor, uh, I'm William. I'm not Will, but William said, Pastor, I know you preach a lot. He had a meeting last week from the Old Testament because the Old Testament reminds me of what I'm really dealing with. The Bible says that God is a consuming fire. He ain't to be played with. That's why I walked the way I walked, Brandon. Because he ain't to be played with. That's why the passion, man, let me tell me, my object of my passion is because I'm in love with Jesus. The object. What is the object of your love tonight? Because Jesus is not the object of your passion, the object of your love. You and I are open candidates for a shipwreck. Anytime he's not the object, anytime he's not the main focus. Even in time that he's not the point person to your love, right. you ain't gonna make it. That's it. You'll go through the formality, but you won't make it. Right. He is the object, yeah. focus of my passion. Yes. Is the love for God. Yes, Jesus. It works for me, as you would say. I can't talk about nobody else, but this will work for me. Amen. I'm trying to help you. I love you. She can never be the object of your love. That's father, apostolic father. Are you listening to me? And he can never be the object of your loves. Are you listening to me? And I love mine, 32 of them. But she told me, don't you ever make me before God. My wife has told me that many times. See, some of y'all need to hear that type of stuff because your object is sitting right next to you. That's why when that ain't at peace and that ain't moving right, you messed up. You can't function. You don't want to read. You don't want to pray because your love ain't here. 
Your love is here. Your love should be vertical, not horizontal. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Don't intentional turn away from truth to error. In the case of Hinemis or Hinemis, it would appear that he rejected the true teaching of faith. I'm going to get through point one. He rejected the true teaching of faith and embraced false doctrine. False doctrine is rapid. It was, it was, it was rapid over, this is over 4,000 years ago now. Now the two is years, over four. It was rapid then and it's rapid right now. False doctrine. Anytime you find people, my God, moving away from this, this is the genesis. This is the beginning. My God, everything starts right here. Before there was all that other stuff, the rainbow was God set the rainbow. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. See what I'm trying to say? It is what it is. See what I'm trying to say? This is it. I've just choose, let me move quickly because I want to finish. Uh, when it says cling to your faith, as long as you keep this as Lord, Lord, Brandon, and don't deviate from this, you'll cling to your faith. The minute you start questioning like Eve did this, shipwreck is on its way. Disconnect is on its way. Contamination and compromise is on its way. See what I'm trying to say? This has to be Lord, L-O-R-D, capital. See what I'm trying to say? This still matters, Solo. Don't never deviate from this. Remember what your pastor said. Pastor said, I'm tough. I know it's right. Think about all the things you tried and it didn't work. Think about the revelation, woman of God, thank you, Holy Ghost, that God gave you. Broken crayon, still color. God still, every one of these persons in this Bible was broken. And God still used them. This still matters. This, this supersedes, I'm out there with God, this supersedes tradition. This supersedes protocol. I don't care how long your grandma been at the church. I don't care what she say. What do this say? I know your mama taught you that, but did she teach you what this said? Or did she give you opinion no matter that it came from tradition? Why do I say that? Why am I able to say that? Because I'm studying on truth. Because the Bible says that every man, no gender, be a lie and let God be the truth. And y'all know as well as I know, the body of Christ around the nation has moved away. They call it right, wrong, and wrong, right. We ordaining stuff that God cursed, Old and New Testament. We are commissioning and releasing people into apostolic ministries and so forth, their character, and y'all know what I'm talking about. We are doing things we have, it's false doctrine, Wrap it. And people don't want to hear that because this is biblical truth. It's amazing how we say we want the truth as Christians, but when we hear the truth, we run from it. I want to sit up on somebody and speak the truth. I don't want to go to no church where they ain't nothing but hypocrites and all that other stuff. As Bishop used to already say, when you showed up, then that go. Because all of us got a level of hypocrisy inside of us. So, don't turn from truth to false doctrine. Everything that appears that's good don't mean that it's God. Everything that sounds good don't mean that it's God. I, 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 the devil, Brandon, convinced Eve who knew the truth. All this is yours. Don't touch this one. And yet the enemy was cunning and crafty, and he convinced someone that knew. Boy, don't think that you're above getting deceived. See, so, so, so she knew the truth and was still deceived. Because he made Eve think that this fruit that God said, if you eat it, you're going to die. Spiritually. Was okay. So what did she do? She justified, turned her back on truth and went to error see, and convincing herself that God is not telling the truth but this enemy she didn't know at the time is telling the truth yeah. see that's, that's called spiritual deception yeah. don't you know demonic oppression can cause you and I to think something is error that's truth 
That's why I, I always rebuke and bind oppression and depression and suppression. When you are oppressed, be careful because you open yourself up for demonic activity. And you will begin to turn from truth to error. Eve thought that the apple was good. The fruit was good. So just because it appears, something appears as good, Naila, don't mean that it's God. The devil, the counterfeit showed up before the real did. That's why you got to be patient. Quit grabbing at everything and anything. Quit listening just because it sounds good. The enemy would entice you and I uh, behind our feelings. He attacks the emotions. And when we attack in our emotions, my God, and we mesmerize in our emotions, my God, and then when our emotions get connected to a feeling, and now we got a feeling going on in our body, and now we got something or someone that's removing us from truth and dragging, dragging us to error. Shipwreck. Because the enemy know how to get to your emotions. He get through your emotions by the way you think and a will that's not submitted. Here's another thing. The, the spirit of rejection that a lot of times, not all the time, a lot of times starts in the womb. John Eckhart said that a, a, a young child could tell if they was unwanted. Sometimes if a baby come out too soon, because they get in the comfort, thank you, Holy Ghost, my God. They get in the comfort of being inside the womb, and they learn that environment. And then when a baby is thrust, I'm going to use that word, out from the womb into the world, my God, now I got to learn new voices and all this stuff, my God, and it can settle, my God, and start a form of rejection. Rejection, as me and my baby been talking about, it leads to fear. Two things, it's products of rejection, fear and pride. From fear come rebellion. See, God is showing me what type of ministry at another level we're dealing with. It's a lot of rebellion, a lot of fear, because it's a lot of rejection. That's why I got to continue to grow and expand, and I can't take everything personal, because they're not rejecting me, they're rejecting the spirit. That's right. A lot of people is dealing with rejection that I didn't cause. She didn't cause. And there's many forms of rejection. And after rejection, fear, and pride, then come bitterness. Bitterness. So some of that bitterness that you're feeling, trace it back to the root of rejection. I didn't mean to screw your daughter, but I'm trying to torment the devil. I got a lot of sons and daughters that are struggling with rejection. Rejection is making thousands around the country shipwreck. All this is flowing into one word. Don't shipwreck. Yes, the series is coming on rejection. Y'all ready for that one? Okay. Let me get through this and get y'all out of here. Somebody give God a hand, though. Mm. So you turn, my God, from truth to error, and you begin to brace false doctrine. For Alexander, it seems that he developed a mean spirit and began to work against the things of the Lord. That's another thing. When you find people always complaining against the things of the Lord, always just mean all the time. Can't nobody, don't nobody want to be around you. You just mean. You, as Jake said, you're just like a burnt black cat. When you are a mean-spirited person, that's pain there. Yes, it is. It's pain there. You've been dropped, Mephibosheth. You feel abandoned because your father's not there. Your mama's just not there. Some of you never had mama. Some of you never had fathers. I'm being sensitive, my God. And the people, my God, that you was passed to mishandled you and dropped you and talked to you crazy. You got so much going on. That's why I thank God for the internal transformation of discipleship. That's why there's so much going on. That's why to my leaders, that's why there's so much warfare going on. Learn how to follow God in the spirit. There's all kind of warfare going on because the enemy is dead. God is digging up all that pain down in our souls. You don't know why you so angry, Micah. You don't know why you so mean. The slightest thing will set you off. 
That's because we are, that's because, watch me, we are wounded. That's why you got to give each other, look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor. That's why you got to operate in the second greatest commandment. It's to love your brother and your sister. Now, I'm not talking about let somebody mishandle you. I'm not talking about let somebody misuse you. But this is where you got to activate the kingdom rules to love thy neighbor. People are getting dealt with. People are in here getting dealt with. People with souls are getting put back together. The enemy has ripped a lot of your souls out like he ripped mine out before. My God, but God is trying to put it back together and it's painful right now. I, I said it's painful because God is putting his hands on us. Oh my God, God got his hands on us and he's trying to mold us and shape us and put us back together. That's why right, you got to be long suffering fruit of the spirit. That's how you got to be patient with one another. Oh, my God, because God is working. That's why we have 81 people, Lanny told me, 81 people in discipleship class last Sunday. 81 people. And Pastor Champ is steady handing out toy of uh, Kleenex. Women is crying, wife crying, all kind of people crying, men crying, all that. Because there's pain going on, but we get healed in the midst of the pain. That's good pain. That's good pain. Yes, Them is good tears. Yes, it is, Pastor. How many people are sitting in churches hiding? Sick. Form of God is outward expression, but. Thank you, Lord, for healing. One of the reasons that calls spiritual shipwreck is a mean-spirited person. Mm. Oh, my God. A mean-spirited person, my God, is uh, they're against the work and the things of the Lord. Both of them, Hynemus and Alexander, they both ended up where they were because they pushed away truth. Let me finish. Some of us, if you don't like where you're at external, you got to look at what's going on internal. Mm -hmm. They pushed away truth and turned to error. The same process takes, oh my God, the same process takes place with people in the church. They move from truth to error. This decision, church, though, is not made in an instant. You just don't shipwreck. You just don't wake up and say, I quit. It's been something going on that's been left undetected. Some of it has not been undetected. It's just left been unattended to. And you've been seeing the warning signs. You've been feeling them. You've been hearing them. But you've just been turning your back on them. You keep trying to convince yourself that it's going to get better and that I'm okay and God know my heart and all of those type of stuff. My God, as soon or later you wake up and there you go. You didn't walk completely away from God. Mm. Are y'all with me so far? Let me bring it in. Mm. No one wakes up and says, I will... I, I says I would think I'll throw away my, let me give you these. No one, nobody wakes up and say, I'm going to throw away my testimony. I'm going to throw away my influence. Let me shut the book. I know when I close the book, I'm coming in. Let me, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me help the body. The word of God said they overcame. Overcame. What do you need to overcome tonight? What potential warning signs? Are we dealing with tonight? What mindsets do you really got? Where's your true devotion at tonight? What's interfering with your love for God? What's keeping you from really selling out to God? What's keeping some of you men and women from really coming down here, man, and prostrating yourself? And you know, deep down in your soul, that you are miserable. But you come up in here faking it. You come up, you living out there faking it. What? What is robbing you from sharing your testimony? Why are you scared to testify about the things that you're supposed to be delivered from? Because if you are delivered from that stuff that's in the past, it don't matter because it's what I used to do. It ain't what I'm doing today. They overcame. Don't you know? Let me help y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bring it in. Your deliverance or your next level, your next breakthrough has to do with you overcoming 
by way of your testimony. The only people that will not testify about the things they have been through is they fearful of what somebody going to think about them. Yeah. Yeah. If First Lady or Sharon knew that I was that type of woman, wonder how they're going to look at me. Guess where that come from? Rejection. You see that? Boy, the Spirit of God is teaching y'all. I can't, I, 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 I don't want to share who I really am and what I really come out of because I'm worried about how Stephanie going to see me, woman of God. I wish she going to think about me and if she going to tell everybody in the church. So I just sit down on my testimony. Even though I heard two or three people that my God that's going through the thing I'm already delivered from, but I don't want to share because I don't want them to know that I went through that. That's rejection. The fear of being rejected and not accepted. Wow. Brandon, your pastor ain't cut like that. It is what it is. Amen. See what I'm trying to say? How many of y'all sitting, watch this, I'm serious, sitting and bondage when you should be free by now, but you won't testify. You know when we say, who in my life got to suffer while I remain the same? When you don't share your testimony for stuff you've been delivered from, you're causing other people to suffer. Amen. Because you let it free rob you of a testimony. You overcame by the blood and the word. People don't testify because they're still doing and living their testimony. Right. Overcame. That means it's behind you. So if my testimony is being robbed, your testimony gives you credibility. Your testimony, Sharon, gives you influence in the kingdom. Not just at 205, in the kingdom. People can identify. You know how many times you can remember how many people say they draw strength from your worship? Don't ever stop it. I see many people when you break loose and break out, be wondering what's going on, what's she doing. I be every look. That's why I say, don't watch her, watch God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because see what happened, you'll go and get in your place in God, and then people that don't understand or criticize you, form a perception about you, because they don't understand your worship, just like they form a perception about your pastor, because they don't understand my passion. And Jesus is the object of that passion. But somebody needs your worship. The woman of God get told every Sunday and every Wednesday. They like the way she handles herself as a first lady. She don't have to be up with a microphone to be effective. But I promise you, for those that know her behind the scenes, she's extremely effective. And I thank God for it because it took her a minute for her to get comfortable with people trying to make her be somebody that she ain't. That's all going into your testimony. And then if you allow your testimony to get contaminated, then your influence is gone. That's right. Solomon said, your reputation will mean more. And he compared it. Your reputation, that's your testimony. He compared it to gold. And silver. Your reputation means more. You can outspend some money, but you cannot live your testimony. That's why the Bible says money in a fool's hand will make it as wings and eagle and fly away. Because you got some money don't mean you got a testimony. Your testimony comes from the stuff you have overcame. That God wants to use to help somebody else overcome. So, I want to encourage every one of us to make sure that we do not allow going forward this day. Because God has given us an opportunity. He will to ask him to have mercy and to forgive us. But you need to remember, if you keep your testimony intact, and if you stumble, and if you get some contamination on your testimony, life is not over. But you got to understand one of the greatest weapons that you and I have as people, Clymesia, is our testimony. Testimony gives way, Amber, to influence. Your testimony is powerful. It is a weapon. That's why you made it out. It's thousands and thousands of people, Brandon, with our testimony. But all of them didn't make it out. Right. 
if we escaped, Trish, you escaped all the way from Texas to Oklahoma. You escaped. Val, you made it out. Sharon, you made it out. Tiki, you made it through and out. Through everything I carried you through before I got saved and everything you've been through growing up as a young woman. You made it out. Oh, my daughter always say, I thank God I made it out. Some of y'all need to catch what the Spirit of God just said. I thank God I made it out. You made it out. Now let God build your testimony. Don't be afraid, Jordan. Everything is working together for the good. Cling to your faith. Get back to your first love. Get back, body of Christ, of falling in love with Jesus. Come back to your first love. Many of us ain't in love with God like we once was. All type of distractions is in the way. It is. It is. I heard about all the people that's everywhere. Everywhere. All out in places they shouldn't be. I see them. My daughter see them. Everybody see them. It's their testimony. God is building it. What am I trying to say? Just because you stumbled on me and your testimony ain't no good. Even if you go back to the club. Even if you is drunk in the club. Your testimony still good. Even if you do smoke some weed. Your testimony still good. Even if you do answer the phone at 115, your testimony is still good. Just don't keep answering. Just don't keep answering. Even if you stumble, would it Donnie McClurk to say, get back up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't think that you can't shipwreck. That's what I'm trying to get us to understand in point number one and point two. And we're going to finish up with the Lord delay is coming next week. I know I went over, but we needed this. Well, my spiritual father called me and told me when I asked him about the pulse and he told me that too many people are ch- churches are trying to live in the past they don't want to accept what God is trying to do in the future we have experienced that as a body everybody wants the same old same old they ain't open to the new growth terrorize people because growth takes people out their comfort zone when people see big they frantic because they so used to poverty they used to debt they used to mediocrity and so they see growth it terrifies them so they'll leave. Some people want to be a part of something small. That's small-minded people. If you're going to go with God, you got to be willing to do big things. So let's think about this right quick. You know what? That's everybody just come. Come on, let's come. We're going to pray. We're going to all pray. I went over, but it's all good. Any form of any form of frustration, bitterness, anything you just want to, and like I teach y'all, just because you come to the altar don't mean that you, come on, you're in sin. Yeah, 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 but we just need to spend a little time with the Lord. 